While various countries have been competing in the race to space, there's only so much we can accomplish in the current time being and leave the rest to our future generations. With an international space station successfully in orbit, another space station that is expected to complete soon, various moon landings and exploration. Okay, retro, go. Fido, go. Com, go. Jinsei, go. Ecom, go. Surgeon, go. Capcom, we're go for undocking. Revolving around our sun are nine planets. After the Earth comes Mars, which has been a hot topic for decades. Mars is filled with mysteries. Volcanoes 75,000 feet tall, huge canyons 3,000 miles across and six miles deep, all kinds of interesting features. Okay, Peter, we copy. We're proceeding into the IUSPI lock checkup. The red, uninhabited planet is currently the most widely searched planets for life. Oceans and lakes may have existed on Mars long ago, but it seems that water was only around for a short period. Some even believe that water still exists underneath Mars' surface. There is currently no sign of human or extraterrestrial life on planet, but there is a decent bit of robotic life with 14 functioning and non-functioning spacecraft. Eight remain in orbit around the red planet, while the rest six continue their designated missions or lay to rest after their ventures. With a lot of information coming from missions that began from the 19s, Mars exploration is one of the key factors that might supposedly help the human race in future. After all, exploration is the first step, which would soon be followed by colonization. From the Soviet researches and failed missions to NASA taking over and successfully landing their own rovers in Mars, the enthusiastic SpaceX CEO Elon Musk with his own future plans and finally, the Chinese space program, facing major successes in their recent Mars exploration missions, we have come a long, long way. And while we do not know what the future beholds, it is surely looking bright. So buckle up because in today's episode, we will take you on a long journey from the initial Mars discovery, to the past and current Mars exploration missions, and the upcoming Mars colonization plans that will shape the future of our following generations. This is Race to Space, and if you like watching content like this, consider subscribing. Mars has always been referred to as death due its red line appearance. In ancient Sumerian language, the red planet was named Nurgle, who was their god of war and plague. In Mesopotamian text, it was referred to as the star of judgment of the fate of the dead. The Egyptians called it Herdesher, and finally, the Romans called it Mars for their god of war. Even today, it's frequently called the Red Planet because iron minerals in the Martian dirt oxidize or rust causing the surface to look red. The Mars exploration kicked off in 1960, where the Soviets launched a series of unscrewed spacecraft to the Red Planet which included intended flyby, orbiters, and landing missions. While most of the missions failed, the effort was there which according to some, consisted of tons of immature mistakes. For the time being, the Soviet Union had only two successful missions out of 18 total missions. Their plans were then halted for about 15 years. In 1988, the Soviet Union launched two space probes, Phobos-1 and Phobos-2. While the first one failed, Phobos-2 managed to relay about 37 of the Martian moon Phobos. These were officially the last Mars missions by the Soviet Union. The Mariner program was originally conducted by NASA to explore other planets. Between 1962 to 1973, NASA's Jet Propulsions Laboratory developed 10 robotic interplanetary probes named Mariner. Out of 10 total missions, seven were successful that formed the starting point of NASA and JPL's space probe programs. The Mariner 3 and Mariner 4 carried Mars flyby missions. While Mariner 3 failed, Mariner 4 was the first successful mission that practically marked the beginning of our Mars exploration journey. In 1965, the spacecraft flew past Mars and collected first close-up photographs of the red planet. While the Mariner 4 was expected to survive about eight months, it lasted three years in solar orbit and continued long-term environment studies. The communications with the spacecraft were finally lost after it was bombarded by micrometeoroids. The Mariner 6 and Mariner 7 were a tag team that were launched in a two-spacecraft mission to Mars in 1969. Both flew over the equator and southern hemisphere of the planet Mars and analyzed atmosphere and surface while recording and relaying hundreds of pictures. 
Both Mariner 6 and 7 are now inoperative. The Mariners 8 and 9 were identical crafts that were designed to map the Martian surface. While the Mariner 8 failed in a launch vehicle failure, Mariner 9 became the first artificial satellite of Mars after going into orbit in 1971. Upon arrival, Mariner 9 observed a massive dust storm that persisted for a month. Afterwards, Mariner 9 exceeded all primary photographic requirements by photo mapping 100% of the planet's surface and transmitted over 7,000 images. The spacecraft also provided the first close-up pictures of the two small, irregular Martian moons, Phobos and Deimos. It is worth noting that the Mariner 9 mission was the first to reveal Mars as a completely different planet than it was expected. The data revealed gigantic volcanoes, carved ancient riverbeds, and a massive Grand Canyon. After functioning in Martian orbit for nearly a year, it completed its final transmission in October 1972, marking the end of its mission. The Viking program consisted of two identical space probes, Viking 1 and Viking 2, both of which landed on Mars in 1976, marking a historic moment as the project became first U.S. mission to land a spacecraft on the Red Planet. Both spacecrafts consisted of two main parts, an orbiter designed to photograph the surface of Mars from orbit and communicate relays for the landers once they touched down, a lander designed to study the planet from surface. After their launch, both crafts orbited Mars for more than a month and returned images that were used for landing site selection. Afterwards, the orbiters and landers detached. The landers then entered the Martian atmosphere and soft landed on the sites that had been chosen. Viking 1 touched down first and Viking 2 followed about two months later. The orbiters continued to image and perform other scientific operations from orbit while the landers deployed instruments on the surface. The landers took photographs, collected other science data on the Martian surface, and performed three biology experiments designed to look for possible signs of life. The experiments found unexpected chemical activity in Martian soil, but found no presence of microorganism life in the soil near the landing site. The Viking mission was planned to continue for 90 days after landing. Each orbiter and lander operated far beyond its design lifetime. Viking Orbiter 1 continued for four years and 1,489 orbits of Mars, concluding its mission in August 1980, while Viking Orbiter 2 functioned until July 1978. The Pathfinder was the first ever robotic rover that landed on the surface of Mars. It launched in 1996 and landed a base station in 1997. It consisted of a lander and a wheeled robotic rover called Sojourner. Both the rover and the lander carried instruments for scientific observations and to provide engineering data on the new technologies. Included were scientific instruments to analyze the Martian atmosphere, climate, geology, and the composition of its rocks and soil. Mars Pathfinder used an innovative method of directly entering the Martian atmosphere, assisted by a parachute to slow its descent through the thin Martian atmosphere and a giant system of airbags to cushion the impact. The lander sent more than 2.3 billion bits of information, including 16,500 pictures, and made 8.5 million measurements of the atmospheric pressure, temperature, and wind speed. The mission was planned to last from a week to a month, but exceeded its expectations when the rover successfully operated for another three months before the communications were halted and the mission was concluded. In the following years, several successful and unsuccessful missions were launched by NASA with different missions and objectives. Through these missions, we learned about the Martian surface, atmosphere, and interior. After the successful deployment of Sojourner, NASA successfully landed four more rovers on Mars. Spirit. Opportunity. Curiosity. Perseverance. In January 2004, twin robotic geologists that went by the name of Spirit and Opportunity landed on the opposite side of Mars. Both rovers trekked for miles on the rocky Martian surface, carrying science instruments conducting experiments and recording observations. While their primary missions consisted of finding range of rocks and soil for clues to past water activity on Mars, they succeeded successfully by sending high-resolution colored pictures of Martian terrain and microscopic pictures of rock and soil back to Earth. 
With data from the rovers, mission scientists have reconstructed an ancient past when Mars was awash in water. Spirit and Opportunity each found evidence for past wet conditions that possibly could have supported microbial life. While both rovers had 90-day missions planned, they exceeded their lifetime by many years. Spirit lasted 20 times longer and retired in 2010, while Opportunity operated for more than 14 years after its launch, before finally dying after a severe dust storm left it damaged. The Opportunity rover's demise sparked an emotional wave all over the world, and NASA gave the rover a beautiful goodbye before letting it rest. Mer Project off the net. Curiosity is the largest and most capable rover ever sent to Mars. It was a part of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory mission. Curiosity set out to answer the question, did Mars ever have the right environmental conditions to support small life forms called microbes? Early in its mission, Curiosity's scientific tools found chemical and mineral evidence of past habitable environments on Mars. Curiosity carried the biggest and most advanced instruments that ever set foot on Martian surface. By drilling rocks, Curiosity analyzed powder samples and determined the history of its rocks. Launched in November 2011, Curiosity rover is still operational. We are a species of explorers, and we will meet many setbacks on the way to Mars. However, we can persevere. Launched in July 2020, Perseverance rover took Mars exploration to a next step. Not only did it drill even more promising rocks to study microbial life, it also worked to seek signs of habitable life in ancient times. With a drill, Perseverance rover stores the samples collected from rocks and stores them away for any future Martian missions that will include humans. In that way, we can bring the samples back to Earth in order to study them under proper large machinery that is too big to be taken on Mars. It was officially the first rover to record Martian sounds with its microphone. Perseverance is the latest rover sent to Mars by NASA and is still operational. When it comes to space, China has always been a latecomer in the race, but they're always able to catch up with their competition. Some say China is the second country to successfully land an operational rover on Mars, while others speculate it is the third or even fourth one, considering the Soviet and Europe space agencies. But let's be honest, both Soviet and Europe missions failed to deliver results like NASA and Chinese space agency. It is also worth noting that China was the first successful space agency that carried out an orbiting, landing and rover missions in the first attempt. In July 2020, CNSA launched the Tianwen-1 mission. The spacecraft carried an orbiter, two deployable cameras, a lander and the famous Zhurong rover. The mission's scientific objectives include investigation of Martian surface geology and internal structure, search for indications of current and past presence of water on Martian surface and characterization of the space environment and the atmosphere of Mars. It took about seven months of transit through the inner solar system before the spacecraft entered the Martian orbit in February 2021. For the next three months, the probe studied the target landing sites from a reconnaissance orbit. In May 2021, the lander and rover portion of the mission successfully touched down on Mars and made history for China marking them as the second successful agency that touched an operational rover on Martian surface. After its successful touchdown on Martian surface, the Zhurong rover photographed itself and the Tianwen-1 lander. It was also the second rover to have recorded and sent Martian sounds after the Perseverance rover. Using the Tianwen-1 orbiter, Zhurong is able to communicate directly with Earth. Mars colonization is still a topic for thoughts, but first comes the Mars sample return missions that are planned by NASA, ESA, and CNSA. While the other rovers serve to explore, picturize, and focus on their routinely missions, the Perseverance rover and the Zhurong rover are collecting and storing samples in hopes that the future manned or unmanned missions might be able to bring the collected samples back to Earth for further inspection and experiments. Colonization or settlement of Mars is a planned human migration and long-term establishment on Mars. It has received interest from public space agencies and private corporations, 
and been extensively explored in science fiction writing, film, and art. Mars' atmosphere is currently extremely hostile for humans, and the planet is quite unstable with fewer resources. While we don't know what the future beholds, we can only hope and prepare for it. Could the future technology be strong enough for manned Mars missions? Could humans succeed in landing a base and actually colonizing Mars? What we've achieved so far, our ancestors could have only dreamed of, and what we might achieve in future, we can only dream of. With everything about Mars covered, it's time to wrap this one up. We hope you've learned a good deal about Martian missions from this video. As always, be sure to subscribe to never miss out. This is Race to Space, and we'll see you in the next one.